Hey people of St. Bart's, it's Ash Wednesday, and as you know, we're unable to meet because of this crazy storm and cold that we're having in North Texas. I hope that you're staying warm, hope that you're staying safe. I know that many of you have experienced power outages, and as you experience those things, if there's anything that you need, please let the church know. I know that our staff and many of, of you are ready and willing and able to help, so please let us know. Though we're not able to meet together on Ash Wednesday, I do want to mark formally the beginning of the season of Lent. We will have an opportunity, weather permitting, on Sunday to meet and to experience the first Sunday of Lent together. And we will also uh, be doing the imposition of ashes during that time. But even so, Ash Wednesday is, is that great marker, the beginning of the season of Lent, when we journey with Jesus towards the cross and out through the cross to the other side in the life of resurrection. It's a season of reflection. It's a season of repentance. And in that Ash Wednesday service, if we were having it, when we impose the ashes, we hear that declaration. It's a declaration of a fundamental truth. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. If you think past, if you think over the past 12 months, maybe the last thing that you think you need to be reminded of is that we are dust, um, that we are fragile. In the face of a global pandemic, we've seen in our own country nearly half a million people die because of the virus. I think each one of us in our own ways have been touched by death in the last year and the reminder that we are fragile. But I wanna draw attention to that idea of being fragile, of being dependent, of being contingent, of being um, dependent upon God for everything we have. And maybe I can put it this way, that even in a world where there was no sin, we would still be God's creation. We would still be his creatures. We would still, like Adam, be dependent upon him to breathe his breath into us that we might have life. And what I mean by all that is that we are always dependent upon God. Circumstances in the last year have made it more of a reality to us. I was reminded of this going to the store in the last couple of days in the middle of this storm and seeing those empty shelves again and having that feeling of, of slight panic that I and I know many of you had about a year ago when there were shelves that were empty and we didn't know if supply chains were going to hold and we didn't know if we were going to have enough food and we certainly didn't know if we were going to have enough toilet paper, as silly as it sounds maybe in retrospect. But going to the store a couple days ago, I was reminded of that, seeing empty shelves and realizing in a very practical way, I'm dependent upon all sorts of things that I don't have any control over. I'm dependent upon supply chains. I'm dependent upon farmers. I'm dependent upon corporations doing what they can do. I'm dependent upon clear roads and all of that to get food to me. And how much more so am I dependent upon life and very breath, my very breath from God? So one thing that I'll encourage you in this season is as we are called in a moment to a season of repentance and penitence, as we are called to a season of prayer and fasting and almsgiving, that when we feel that sense of fragility, when we feel vulnerable and exposed, that's an opportunity to turn to God, turn to the one who made us. There's a passage in the reading from Joel, where we're reminded of the character of God. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. We turn to God because he is gracious and kind. We embark on a journey of self-reflection and repentance in the season of Lent because of the character of God. It's the character of God that makes repentance even possible. We don't turn to someone who is not willing to forgive us. We turn to someone who is ready and willing to forgive us, to invite and welcome us with open arms. And even in that experience of vulnerability and in our fragility, we are invited to turn to the one who made us. So I'm going to read a prayer to formally mark 
the beginning of Lent. But as you consider, you know, this season of prayer and fasting, as you consider this season of almsgiving these things, I'm inviting you to make a simple practice of when you feel that sense of fragility, of vulnerability, to turn to God, to remember that, yes, we are dust and that we are dependent upon him for life and breath and our very being. There should be a link to a bulletin. I'm going to read the beginning of the Ash Wednesday service. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. In this manner, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need that all Christians continually have to renew our repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning, let us now pray for grace that we may faithfully keep this Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.